So tonight we're going to be presenting a little bit of uh, what a neighborhood watch meeting would normally look like. And hopefully this is a continuing series that will assist you in not becoming the victim of a crime and give you a little bit of information of what's going on in your neighborhood. First of all, let me explain to you what a beat is. A beat is used by the officers at the Fort William Police Department as a means of becoming more effective by utilizing the citizens within that beat to inform them of crimes that are occurring, suspects that they may have identified, or by just having someone to talk to um, if they need any type of assistance from the police department. Uh, the beat officers are responsible for four beats within the city. Those four beats are geographically designed so that the officer either has businesses, a series of businesses and residences within his beat that he's specifically tasked to know what crime trends are there uh, and to know who the lawful citizens are, to know who the suspects are, to know who's on parole and probation. And tonight we'll have three of the beat officers presenting to you. The first of which will be Senior Officer Jesus Chavez presenting for beat one. Good evening. My name is Jesus Chavez and I am a senior officer with the Fort Police Department. I am the beat coordinator for B2, but tonight I will also be providing information for B1, which was assigned to Senior Officer Tapia, who recently got promoted to Sergeant. I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate Sergeant Tapia. I will begin by providing crime statistics for the last three months for B1. For further information for the uh, beat area, log on to the uh, City of Fogonimi um, website. For week B1, during the month of July, we had zero homicides, no robberies, we had two assaults. During one of the assaults, a handgun was involved, and the other one was a domestic violence. We had two, one stolen vehicle, which was recovered during the same day, and also an arrest was made. During the month of July, we did not have any raids in Big One. We had three burglaries. Two of them were commercial burglaries, and one of them was an auto burglary. We also had seven thefts. Most of them were from businesses and in which several suspects were apprehended and arrested. For the month of June, we had, for the month of June on B1, we had zero homicides, zero robberies, five assaults. During one of the assaults, an officer was involved, and the rest of them were domestic violence involved. Um, we had zero rapes, three burglaries, arson, and one theft from a vehicle. During the month of May, we had zero homicides, two robberies in which zero assaults, one motor vehicle theft, seven burglaries, most of them auto burglaries, zero arsons, and six thefts from businesses, and one from a vehicle. That was the crime statistics that we have for the last three months 
in V1. Now I'm going to be providing you with information related to V2, which is my V. Uh, during the, uh, and again, for further information regarding the, uh, the uh, beats refer to the uh, CDO 41 website. Log on to the CDO 41 website. During the month of July, we had zero homicides, two robberies in which a gun was involved. During one of the robberies, a suspect was arrested. We had one assault, domestic, uh, domestic violence related. We had two stolen vehicles recovered, no rapes, and we had one vehicle burglary. We had three thefts, thefts from uh, residents. During the month of uh, June, we had zero homicides, zero robberies, zero assaults, zero uh, vehicles stolen, zero rapes. We had three burglaries from vehicles, one from a vehicle and two commercial burglaries. We had zero arsons and we had five thefts from vehicles. Now we want to be providing information for the month of May. We had zero homicides, zero robberies, two assaults, one in which an officer was involved, zero vehicles stolen, vehicles stolen, zero rapes. We had one theft from a garage, actually a burglary from a garage in which a bicycle was stolen and we had three thefts from, from vehicles. Again, these are the, uh, the uh, crime statistics that we have for B1 and B2. I would like to, I would like to ask, the public, ask the public to lock their vehicles, park the vehicles in a well-lit area, um, lock and secure the vehicles, make sure that you don't leave any valuables in plain view, so that way we can prevent uh, some of these uh, crimes. My name is Paul Gomez. I'm a senior police officer for the city of Fort Wayne. I've been a police officer for 22 years. Uh, what I will be providing to you are the criminal statistics for several months of this year. Uh, beginning with the month of May, uh, in my general area, which is B3, uh, there was a report of two assaults, one which was a domestic, and the other was an officer involved in assault. So we had three residential burglaries, one vehicle burglary, and one commercial burglary and we had two thefts of vehicles. In the month of June, we had one domestic assault, one stolen vehicle, two residential burglaries, one vehicle burglary, and one theft from a vehicle. In July of 2013, uh, there was only one report of theft from a vehicle, so crime significantly dropped in my B and B3. Uh, my, I want to reiterate to the public that don't be a victim. Always lock your vehicles, do not leave valuables. Uh, one of the common thefts that we have is that people leave their vehicles unlocked and that gives the criminal the opportunity to make you a victim of a crime. Uh, the next, what I will be providing you is for grid four, which is uh, Senior Officer Ryan Bates, who could not be here tonight. And the month of May, in Officer Bates area, there were several vehicle burglaries and several theft from vehicles, as well as one assault at the beach, which we both denied. In the month of 
of June, Officer Ryan Baker Pete experienced uh, several vehicle burglaries and again, uh, theft from vehicles where personal property was taken, laptops and jewelry, watches. <coughs> and in the month of July, again, there was another assault at the beach uh, that involved several people. Uh, there was one commercial burglary and then there was uh, several vehicle burglaries. Again, in some of the vehicle burglaries, uh, the windows were smashed out, as well as, again, uh, some of the vehicles were left <coughs> along. Now, that's the information I have to provide to the public. And again, uh, the message we as uh, the police department want to send out to the criminal is not in our town. We will come and get you. something that we should bring up. Uh, oftentimes when someone calls the police department, they feel as if the uh, dispatchers are ignoring them or they, they don't care So because they're asking so many questions. So what I thought I would do is I would have our dispatch supervisor, Jerry Harvey, come in and talk to you about what to expect when you call the police department. Jerry? something 
you've already reported, or if you just need to leave a message for an officer, please use our business line. Now when you call the police, be prepared to answer multiple questions, questions that are specific to what you're reporting. Please listen carefully to the dispatcher, try to speak calmly and clearly as possible. Our dispatchers undergo extensive training. They know exactly what questions to ask depending on what it is that you're reporting. They will be also relaying that information to the officers that are responding to you. And remember, the dispatcher is doing multiple things at once. Please be very patient. At times, the dispatcher might need to put you on hold. Please don't hang up. We'll waste time in that. Those few seconds could be very precious in which we're trying to call you back to either get some more information from you or maybe to give you some directions prior to the officer arriving. Please remain on the line until the dispatcher tells you it's okay to hang up. And remember, you can always be anonymous. You do not have to leave your name or your address. We will ask your phone number in case we do get disconnected before the call is complete. There might be some other details that we need, but remember, we can keep you anonymous. We will not put your name, address, and phone number in the journal if you are requesting to be anonymous. Further, please provide as much information as possible. We don't want you to put yourself in harm's way at all, but if you could possibly tell us exactly what it is that you're reporting. Can you tell us exactly where it happened? It might be something not occurring in our jurisdiction, but we might need to transfer that call to another agency to best help you. Remember, as far as where it's happening, is there a separate apartment or unit number? If you're not sure of the exact address, can you give us a hundred block or a cross street so we can best get to whoever it is that needs help? Can you tell us when it happened? Is it happening right now? Did it happen an hour ago, or is this something that happened last week? Is anybody injured? And if so, how are they injured? Are there any weapons involved? And if there are weapons, what type? Was it a gun? Was it a knife? Was it a bat? If you can give us a description of that weapon and where it was last seen, was the suspect holding it? Was it on their person, in a pocket, in a waistband? Did they maybe throw it in some bushes? Give us as much information as possible, but again, not putting yourself in harm's way. If you could describe the suspects or involved parties and what it is you're reporting, we will ask you, were they male or female? How old were they? their race, how tall were they, how much did they weigh, hair and eye color if possible, a clothing description. Uh, and normally we would ask that from head to toe, were they wearing a hat, what color shirt, what color pants, and anything distinctive about them. Did they have any scars, marks, tattoos, prescription glasses, or anything distinctive where they would stand out from someone else if the officer is looking for them. Now did the suspect or people involved, did they leave on foot or in a vehicle? And if so, what was their last direction of travel? And if there was a vehicle involved, if we could get as much vehicle information so the officer could find them. We'll ask you the color, the year, the make, the body style, and the license plate if possible. Even if you could give us a partial license plate, that would be something an officer could have to go on. If you're not familiar with types of vehicles, we'll ask is it an older or newer vehicle and what's the body style? Is it a car, a truck, an SUV? And was there any damage to the vehicle? Again, something distinctive that will stand out. Now, something else to remember if you call 911, if you're calling from your house and it's a landline phone, your address and phone number will show up on our screen, but the dispatcher will always ask you to confirm that information. It's rare, but sometimes information is entered incorrectly and we can get that corrected. Now, if you're calling 911 from a cell phone, we don't know where you are. The screen will show us the cell tower in which the call was received, but it doesn't tell us exactly where you are. So it's very important that you're able to tell us where you are. And lastly, if you accidentally call 911, please stay on the line. Let the dispatcher know that it was an accident and that you don't have an emergency. If you do hang up, the dispatcher will be calling you back to make sure that there is no emergency there. Thank you very much. month we're going to try and present an expose on things that happen at the department just like we did with Jerry what to expect when you call dispatch um, along with that I'd like to introduce to you now dr. Judy Yates and she'll be talking to you a little bit of how to avoid being a victim thank you chief Kaiser um, there are five uh, financial crimes that are occurring or have occurred in our community and I would like to talk a bit about each one so that you can avoid being a victim. The first one is the grandparent scam. Back up. You got wrong me. Okay, the other way. 
I know financial crimes. I don't know whether. <laughs> Thank you. All right. We're going to talk about uh, the grandparent scam. Um, if this happens to you, never send money. And one of the things that the uh, person on the other uh, end of the line will say to you is, first of all, they will call, and you'll answer the phone, and someone on the other end of the line will um, really speak urgently. And they'll say something to the effect of, Grandma or Grandpa, depending on who answers the phone. Um, I, I'm in Mexico. I've been in an accident. And I, I need you to send me money. They're going to put me in jail. Or else they'll say, I've been in an accident and I need medical treatment. And I have to have money right away. I need you to take money uh, to Western Union. And, and please, please don't tell my parents uh, that anything is wrong. Whenever this happens, you need to hang up. You need to call the parents. Um, it is always a scam. This can be in the form of uh, an, an aunt or an uncle and somebody on the other end of the line. Maybe they know your name. Maybe they don't. They just kind of a shot in the dark. But they're asking for money. And whenever they say Western Union, you know this is something you really need to watch out for. And um, report that to the police. The second scam is the romance scam. And um, this is money for love. Please, never marry someone that you meet the first week. You know, I, I know it sounds kind of funny, but really, we have had people that have actually recently uh, married somebody that they met and they knew them only one week. Now, this young lady happened to be 20 years younger than this gentleman. And gee, surprise, after they were married, she moved in her three young children and is demanding a car and house, you really need to know someone before you ha add them to your checking account or before you marry them, before you ever mix your money with love. Please, get to know them, introduce them to your family. Surprisingly enough, this gen particular gentleman had not introduced her to the family um, because he didn't want to hear what they had to say. But a lot of times your family has your best interest at heart. Um, if you on, uh, go online, I have had a case recently where um, an older woman met someone on Match.com and um, she sent him over $100,000 over a period of two years. And when she could no longer make payments on her car, her daughter realized what was happening, called the police, the police confiscated the computer. And right now the mother is very mad at the daughter uh, because she believes that she would be married and be $20 million richer. The daughter actually found photographs of this man online under other names and tried to point them out to her mother that you are being scammed. She didn't want to hear it. Once again, you have to look out and not sell, not let somebody have your love for money. It just doesn't work that way. Um, the third scam is the lottery scam. And I mention that because you really need to know how these scams work. So let's say you get something in the mail or you get it online and it's congratulations, you've won a million dollars or some unspecified amount. Or you've won a prize, a BMW. All you have to do is send keys, the Patriot tax. By the way, there is no Patriot tax, but that is one that they use. Or handling keys or delivery keys, whatever they want to call it. And so you send them money. The next thing you know, they will ask you for more money. Oh, we forgot there is this additional charge. It's never ending. They will continue to ask you for money, either by check or send it to Western Union. Another thing they're doing is they're asking you to go down to your local store and get a um, gift card in the form of like a Visa or a MasterCard and load it with $500, $1,000 and then you go back online or on the telephone and you give them the number on the back of that card and they instantly bring your money online. So be very, very careful. Um, Western Union is a uh, mandated reporter in California. When they see financial abuse happening or they, they are required to report that. And um, especially with the elderly and dependent adults, it goes to Adult Protective Services but we have a gentleman, a retired doctor, who put over 
dollars on a visa, um, in increments of five hundred dollars each, and the scammers took in for all that money. So it can happen no matter what your education le level happens to be. Just beware, people want your money, and don't be an easy target. The next scam is called the Nigerian scam, also known as 419 scams. And the reason they use 419 is in Nigeria, that happens to be the penal code of what the scam happens to be about. That, once again, is an advanced fee uh, fraud. So in the mail, by fax, um, on the phone, you get um, a, a proposition, business proposition. You know, I have funds, they're not cashing my check, what have you, uh, I'm gonna send it to you, you put it in your bank account and you send me X number of dollars. That is a scam. Whenever anyone asks you, asks you for money up front, that is illegal. There is a, a law that says, if you win something, if you get something for free, you, you don't have to pay up front. Even if you win the lottery, which is legal, they don't ask you for money up front. I mean, yes, you can buy a ticket in that particular case, but they're not asking you, oh, before we give you these millions of dollars, you need to you know, give us additional money. That is called an advanced fee fraud. So be very, very careful. Never respond and um, hang up. Do not talk to them. You need to understand when these uh, marketers, telemarketers are on the telephone, their goal is to keep you on the phone as long as possible. The longer they can keep you on the telephone, the more likely it is that you're going to give them money. So be very, very careful. The uh, next one, and actually the last one for this evening, is the fake check and money order scam. That's an advanced fee fraud as well. And you get in the mail a, a check that looks really real. And so you take it down to your bank and you deposit it, and the bank is very happy to deposit whatever you bring them. And um, you're supposed to send them back money for whatever reason. There are many reasons that they give you. And you think, well, the bank took my check, I'm fine. The bank will take your check. The bank is only a clearinghouse. They have until the time they discover it is fraudulent to take that money out of your account. So if it's one day or one week or one month, don't ever count on just the fact that the uh, bank took your money. It does not mean that it's legitimate. And you and I can create all kinds of fake checks that look perfectly real on our uh, laser printers. So don't be fooled by the fact that it looks, um, looks real. Uh, so you can deposit it, don't send it, because no matter when it is that the bank comes back and says, sorry, that's fraud, you owe them the money. Just be aware of that. Now, if you ever think you're a victim, always contact your local police department. And up on the screen, we have the number for Provo Me. It's 805-986-6530. And we're located at 250 North in Toro Road in Port Wainini. So make sure that you report all cases where you even think you might be a victim. Thank you. Well, thank you. That brings us to the conclusion of our first Port Wainini Neighborhood Watch. I'd like you to keep watching the uh, website for the Port Wainini Police Department. We will be putting this on the Port Wainini Police Department's website, and we'd ask that you tune in because we're gonna try and keep doing this, and each time we will bring you a different expose as to the crime. I just wanna ensure that all of you understand